uh, another problem within science is the problem of infinity and incompleteness. So, if you don't know this yet, reality is infinite. Science is in denial about the fact that reality is infinite. Science treats reality as though it's finite. Science does not understand infinity and doesn't know how to deal with infinity. The problem with infinity for science is the following. If reality is truly infinite, as I say, and it is, this is a verifiable claim, then no finite method could ever describe infinity. That means that any formal method, including mathematics, any axiomatic system, any scheme of logic, or any scientific method is going to be finite. And if it's finite, by definition, it is incomplete and it is incapable of grasping the infinite. Any method you articulate will be incomplete. Which means that your method will always be expanding. But you're also going to resist the expansion. Which means there's always going to be truths that lie outside of your method that your method cannot prove or cannot access. That's just the nature of what happens when you have infinity and then you have a finite circle within infinity. The finite circle does not encompass the entirety of infinity. So the bottom line is that the scientific method lacks the requisite variety to handle reality. The only way to handle reality is with infinite requisite variety. This is a concept from cybernetics. That means if you want to truly be the best scientist you can, and you want the most truthful and powerful and pure science, your method and your approach to the study of nature needs to be so creative, so open, so flexible, so radical, that it has equal requisite variety to nature itself, which is infinity. The more closer to infinity your mind is, the less limits it imposes on itself, the more it will be able to understand nature. Scientists still do not understand the significance of this problem. Scientists treat nature like it's finite. And the reason they do that is because their methods are finite. So it's actually very convenient. Their methods cannot access infinity directly, and therefore, to them, it seems as though nature is finite. Because, hey, if I can't access it with my methods, and I believe my methods are complete, then, and there's no problems with my methods, uh, then uh, that means that infinity doesn't exist. Of course, this is question begging and uh, gross confirmation bias. It's a blind spot. Uh, now, of course, you might wonder, well, Leo, but how do you know that reality is infinite? Prove it, if this is true. But of course, this begs the whole question. Because the notion of proof is a finite notion. Any notion of proof you have is going to be finite, and infinity, by definition, is not finite, it's infinite. So actually, it's impossible to prove infinity. Now, you'll say, but that means infinity isn't true. No, infinity is true. It just means that it can't be proven. At least not according to your um, narrow, narrow confines of what proof means. Uh, actually, the notion of truth will always outstrip the notion of proof. Proof is a smaller subset of thing than truth. That means there will always be things in nature and in reality that are true, but cannot be proven. If you want to know more about that, go check out my episode about the metaphysical implications of Gödel's incompleteness theorem. That's the title, where I explain that in more depth. It's a um, it's a very important result that most scientists do not understand the significance of. Most scientists are under the false impression that nature can be quantified, analyzed dissected, explained, and reduced, and formally proven. It can be formalized. The idea of formalization, you can take nature and you can symbolize it and formalize it. This is false. You can't do this. Gödel proved that you can't do this with mathematics and logic. And, uh, of course, it extends beyond that 
Tarski extended that uh, beyond uh, mathematics and logic. And of course, just you can use common sense to extend it beyond that as well. Uh, it is possible to demonstrate to yourself that reality is infinite, but that requires your consciousness. You can't do it indirectly through peer review. You can't do it indirectly through, uh, through a formal proof, um, like a mathematical proof or something like that. But you can do it directly with your consciousness using the methods that I talk about elsewhere. You can become directly conscious that reality is infinite, and then you will clearly understand <laughs> why science is finite. You see, uh, science requires personal insight and deep intuitive holistic intelligence to function at all. This is something, again, many scientists and rationalists don't comprehend. People think that they can understand nature through a mechanical meat grinder process. This is not true. You can't do that. Uh, that's extremely limited. All the greatest scientists and their achievements came from direct personal intuitive insight, holistic pattern recognition, beyond anything formalizable or explicable. It's completely nonlinear, and you can't write rules for it. And all proof... The whole notion of proof, beyond just being relative, the notion of proof hinges on personal intellectual capacity. Proof assumes that your mind can have enough capacity for personal insight and intuition to grasp the truth of the proof. You see, this is not a given. People have different capacities for insight. In the same way that, for example, a donkey has a much lower capacity for insight than a human, which is why math and science does not exist for donkeys. Have you noticed this? It's so obvious, but again, overlooked, and most scientists don't understand this. <laughs> there is no science or math for donkeys. There's no numbers for donkeys. There's no gravity for donkeys. There's no quantum mechanics for donkeys. There's no atoms for donkeys. Now, most people assume, well, that's because the donkey is just stupid and the donkey can't understand these truths and therefore the donkey is just unaware of them. No, 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 no. It's not that the donkey is too stupid and isn't, unaware, and isn't aware of them. For the donkey, these things literally don't exist. They exist for you as a human because of your level of consciousness and your neurology and the projection and the invention of these things that you've done with your mind. Science is an invention of the human mind. It's a projection of the human mind which is why it doesn't exist for donkeys. And likewise, for you to be able to understand infinity, it would be as problematic as trying to explain arithmetic to a donkey. Trying to explain infinity to a rationalist, materialist, reductionist, realist, who is stuck within spiral dynamic stage orange, is as difficult and impossible as trying to explain arithmetic to a donkey. It can't work. But if you evolve your level of cognitive development to post-rational and you have some, you know, uh, breakthrough direct consciousness awakenings, you can have a direct experience of infinity yourself. You can't do it through peer review, though. If you insist on doing it through peer review, you're always going to miss infinity because infinity is not a thing that comes to you through peer review because peer review is finite, not infinite. You have to be smart enough to understand this. So, uh, sort of the contradiction within science is that although science likes to claim itself as this very hyper-rational objective method, in reality, what makes the heart of science function and what has generated all the amazing breakthroughs in science has been intuition. This soft, fuzzy thing, it's not hard, and it's not rigid, and it's not rule-based. It's intuition. <laughs> 